of Sheila? I'm not meeting them. All right. I'd better think of somebody else. Why have you changed your mind? I thought you liked the idea. Am I going to be boarded out again? If you like it. I'm not thinking so far ahead. I just want you to meet these people. Sheila, what would you like to do if you don't go into a foster home? I don't know. Stay here, I suppose. Is that the answer? You'll be starting work soon. I want you to start with the same advantages as other girls, with a home and a family behind you. Mr. and Mrs. Howland are very nice. Have they got a television? Uh, no, I don't think so. You always send me where there isn't a television. That's not why you left the last place. They didn't want me. They wanted a maid. Why? Because they asked you to make your own bed. You do that here. You'll have to do worse than that if you carry on the way you're going. You didn't say that before. You said I'd be one of the family. This time you can be, Sheila. They're here. How about it? Come on. Have you got your hanky, William? Yes. Stay in the car, Stephen. We won't be long. Now, if you want to go anywhere, you better wait till we come out, all right? Yes. Miss Gardner's here already. We're in good time. Look, John. Come on. in the playroom. She won't be so shy in front of the other children. We can have a talk later. Sheila, this is Mr. and Mrs. Howland. Hello, Sheila. Hello. We wondered if you might like to come and spend the weekend with us. We don't live very far. Would you like that? Yes. Well, I think you like us. We're very ordinary, aren't we, John? Yes. Mr. Howland teaches at the Technical College in Park Road. Oh. Well, I have a cup of tea ready in my sitting room. Would you like that? Thank you very much. We'll see you later, Sheila. This way, Mrs. Harvey. It's a good job they look happy, or I'd be wanting to take them all away with me. You'll be turning our house into a children's home. I shouldn't mind. They're nice, aren't they? Yeah. London quite recently. Oh, yes. Do you like it here? Yes. We, we haven't made many friends yet. It's a bit of a homecoming for me. I'm a Londoner. Will your children be all right in the car? Uh, soon let us know if they're not. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've seen Sheila, what do you think of her? She seems very nice, from what we saw. Uh, no, thank you. You were thinking of a much younger child originally, weren't you? Oh, I don't mind about the age, John. I'm on my own still lot down here. I, I get lonely sometimes. Mr. and Mrs. Howland lost a little girl last year. Oh, I'm sorry. She's bigger than I expected, Sheila, but... But you think you'll be able to cope? Well, yes, I think so. I'm not able to have any more children of my own. Is that why you applied for a foster child? One of the reasons, yes. John's out a lot. He takes evening classes now. I did want a little girl, but Miss Gardner seems to think that we can help Sheila. I do. But please, let it be your decision. There's a certain amount of risk, and it won't be easy for you. What kind of risk? We've tried to board Sheila out three times before. Each time has made her that little bit more difficult. And she is difficult. She's hurt. And because she's hurt, she strikes out at people and things. Nobody wants her. And she knows this. Stop it, William. Why? There's a big girl watching you. Where? Yeah. 
What about Sheila's family? She's illegitimate. Her mother deserted her when she was three. She's in prison at the moment. Sheila hasn't anybody. If you decide to take her, Mrs. Howland, let it be for her own sake. And not to take the place of the child you lost. What do you think, John? We ought to have her for the weekend. We can do that and then see how things go. I must warn you, she's aggressive and willful. But I have a feeling that if she came to you for a few days and you could persuade her to stay longer, we might get somewhere in the end. We can give the children material things here, but that isn't enough. What does Sheila feel about this? Does she want to stay with us? I think she'd come for a few days. Make it normal and don't spoil her or she'll take advantage of you. An older child will be more company for you if you say you're wanting company. I don't think Sheila will be company for some time. Yes, well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> I think I'm doing right. We can only try. I hope the committee will think the same. I'm sticking my neck out a bit. You have to with Sheila, or what's going to happen to her? Good afternoon. Isn't it cold? Good afternoon. No, oh, you miserable devil. Shh, Anne, he'll hear you. I don't care if he does. We've been here three months, and that's the most we've ever seen of them. Maybe they like to keep to themselves. They go the right way about it. You don't get that at home, you know. New people don't move into a house five minutes without somebody going to see if they can help. Go on with you. <sighs> Put the kettle on. Let's get in first. Have you closed the gate, Stephen? Yes. So I have. Good. Hello, Fussport. Hello, hello. <laughs> you just wait till Sheila comes. She'll put your nose out of joint. We've done it now. You wouldn't have preferred a boy? No. I want... Didn't you? I wanted a boy. Oh, darling. Miss Garner's going to bring us a nice big girl for you to come and play with. She's coming on Friday. There's my school down there. Yes. You see, if you did stay on with the Howlands after the weekend, you'd be able to go to the same school. Yeah. It's a bit further to go, but I expect you'll get a lift some mornings. Did I tell you Mr. Howland teaches mathematics? No. I'm not staying. Of course not. You can come back on Sunday, or before even. You're only saying that. I'm not. You're trying to get rid of me. That's nonsense, Sheila. It's my job to see you settled. You agreed to come. Now go through with it, or you'll never know whether it would have been all right. Please, Sheila. Shut up, big mouth! Silly child. I'm not taking you to a concentration camp. Here's Sheila. Oh, hello. We nearly given you up. Well, take a go to love and we'll have some tea. No. Lay off. Sheila? Well, I can do it myself. All right. There's no need to bite my head off. I might need it. Mrs. Duck was busy collecting together some lovely juicy dandelion leaves and some nice pieces of soaked bread she'd collected that morning from the pond, especially for the picnic. And she was wondering if she could find some lovely fresh peas in the garden behind the farm. Oh, how absolutely quackety lovely, said Dumpy Duckling. And he jumped up and down with joy, flapping his wings with excitement so the little feathers flew off into the air. Quack, quack! Dumpy was poking his beak into all the good things and still jumping up and down. I'll just swim over to Gertie Gosling and quack her the wonderful news. Quack, quack, called Dumpy, as his mother waddled off to the farm. Stop it! You're not to do that! Anne, I think you ought to be in here. Well, I'm here. Come on now, William and Stephen. Come and have some cocoa. Here we are, love. That's it. Would you like some cocoa, Sheila? You haven't eaten very much. You'll have to take us as you find us, you know, and make yourself at home. Uh, has Miss Gardner gone? Well, of course. 
Do you like a biscuit, Sheila? What's the matter, love? Cat got your tongue? Leave her, Anne. She'll settle in her own time. But she wasn't afraid to speak when she arrived. I'm not afraid to speak now, then. <laughs> well, that's something. What's the matter with you? I have any sweets. Yes, there's Williams still in the sideboard. I thought that would make you prick your ears up. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to hand them round, William? Ladies first. Is he a lady? A young lady. Call me if you want anything, won't you? Have you decided what you're going to call me? I call the others auntie. Oh, I see. I'm one of a crowd. Good night. In bed? For the time being. Will she be warm enough? Well, I should hope so. <laughs> I was only wondering if she was used to central heating at Stormont House. Oh, John, don't you start worrying. You're worse than Miss Gardner. Anybody would think I'd never looked after children before. Coming down? No, just say good night. Good night. Oh, I'll just put this up for you, and you won't be falling over it. Sleep well. It hasn't been so bad this evening, has it? No. Disappointed? No. Who's done that? Sheila. And you let her? I have a feeling we'll have a few things like that to put up with. I shouldn't worry about her. We'll have an early night, shall we? She isn't exactly what you'd call pretty, is she? She's been up. Sheila? You don't stand on ceremony, do you? What do you mean? Why couldn't you say if you were hungry? There's no need to take William sweets. Here. Oh, go on, take it if that's what you're wanting. Ugh. Oh, well, we better put these back. Or there'll be some tears in the morning. Let's see if I care. You don't have to deal with them. I think you'd better take your coat off, Sheila. You can't go to bed in your clothes. I'm not going to bed, see, because I'm not stopping your singing, that's your stupid old bitch. Your language is wasted on me, Sheila. I can probably teach you a word or two. Oh, clever. Let's hear a few, then. Oh, stop it. Stop it and don't act so silly. <laughs> let go of me. You let go of me. Bastard. Stop it, Sheila, and have some sense. You're not going out at this time of night on your own. Don't. Get off, you dirty slobber, knock your bloody teeth down your throat! That'll do, Sheila. Oh, shut up, big mouth, if you think you are. That'll do, Sheila. That'll do, Sheila. You! I never hurt you. Will you please go and sit down, Sheila? You're not allowed to do that. Tell Miss Gardner. You've got a prison for cruelty to children. I don't care. I'm not having that sort of behaviour. Where's your chocolate? Get away. Sheila. Get away from me. I hate you. That's a pity. I was beginning to like you. I didn't know there's that much spirit around here. What do you mean? 
Do you want something to eat now? Not from you. Some toast? No. Bacon and egg? No. Do you like chips? I don't mind. Oh, I would go and ask a damn silly thing like that, wouldn't I? Well, what are we going to do? Have I to tell Miss Gardner you don't want to stop? Or are we going to bed? I don't want to go to bed. You're used to sleeping on your own. Hmm? Sheila! Well, why couldn't you have said that before? You could have saved all this bother. But you're a funny girl. What's going on? Eh? I'm sleeping with Sheila. Needn't bother you. Sheila? Sheila? Leave me alone. I brought you a drink. That's better. What time is it? Half past eleven. I've never been in bed at that time before. Don't worry. It's not going to happen every day. Did anything happen to upset her? No, why should it? Woo! Ah, hello, scamp. Hey! Don't get him excited now, John. Hello, Sheila. Had a good sleep? Hurry up, love. I want a dish out. Right, you are. There you Come go. on, Stephen. Come and sit down, Sheila. What's the matter with Sheila? She's got a splinter. She's got a splinter. She's only been in bed. Here, let me see. Come on. Heavens, you've had that in there some time. Never mind. We'll soon have a milk. Come in the kitchen. I'm only going to make a prick. No, lay off. Miss Gardner didn't tell me there was any wrestling in this job. I should have gotten to practice. Leave me alone. I'm not going to hurt you. <coughs> it's only a splinter. You should stay still. I could get it out. <coughs> Sheila. People will think we're murdering you. Well, go on, Shoe. I'll tell you if you miss anything. Go on. Come on, you stay in there. <laughs> Leave her, Anne. I'll take her up to the hospital after dinner. No, 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 no. They've got enough to do. It's coming now. <laughs> you bloody bitch. Yeah, yeah. That didn't hurt much, did it? Oh, girly. I'd hate to be with you in an accident. There we are. Can't see anything now. Go on, go and wash your face and we'll have some dinner. We'll be having nightmares if you carry on like that. I've got something for you, Sheila. What is it? Have a look. I'm sure I didn't hurt her. No, oh, she probably just likes an audience. I expect this is all very strange to her. I'm not exactly used to it myself. What do you think of them? They're not as good as the ones at Storm on Tales. They're strong enough to carry you. It's better now. She will be, as long as you keep buying her things. What made you think of those? She was telling me she could skate. She could swim as well. Oh, you seem to find out a lot about her in a short time. Well, I haven't done so bad. Anyway, she's better off playing with that sort of thing than some of the things children play with nowadays. Atomic pistols and tanks and flick knives. Auntie, uncle, watch me. Yes, love, we're watching. I don't wish her any harm, but I wish she'd fall over. Would you say? I said I hope you're going to polish that floor when you've finished. Ooh. You coming out with us this afternoon? No, I don't think so. I must get some work done. Will you be able to manage? Well, I'll have to, won't I? Thank you. Thank you, madam. How much? Two and six, please. I 
Camilla. What? Come here a minute. What for? Because I want you. What sort of shampoo do you use? I don't know. Which one would you like? I don't care. How about this one with egg in it? <laughs> I'll take that one, thank you. Four shillings, please. By the comics when we get to the corner. Sheila, what have you got there? Now go on, take it back. Yeah, what do you think I am? Well, give it to me then. You try and make me. No, Sheila, I won't do that. You're old enough and bright enough to make yourself. It's not for you, it's for my mother. Well, I think your mother'd rather have something you paid for yourself, even if it's only a dishcloth. I paid for this then. Come on, give it to me. You drop that if you dare. Ugh. Will you look after William for me? I won't be long. William, darling, just stay here till I come back. Do you understand? Yes. Now, Sheila, have you got anything else? Find out. Clever. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Could you put this back? One of my children walked out with it. I, I think it's all right. Oh, right. <laughs> well, there now. We better look sharp. There'll be Daddy home and no tea. Come on, let's see if we can get a bus. I should have thought it was asking for trouble, taking her to Woolworths, a girl we hardly know. It wasn't Woolworths. Well, any of those stores. She'll have a job, going through life in our kind of income without using those kind of stores. Now, don't get upset, Anne. There's no great harm done. Well, I don't see what good it's going to do shouting at me. I'm not one of your students. I'm not shouting at you. I'd have taken my eyes off her. What more could I do? Look, I'll speak to Sheila. Oh, don't, love. What's the point? We don't mean anything to her. You never know. She might take some notice. She's been all right with me so far. Don't flatter yourself. She take notice of anything with trousers on and hairs in its chest. Even your three. Thanks. She was shouting at me in the street. I don't believe that. You don't know what she's like when you're not here. I think I do. I've known her for quite a long time. It doesn't do you any good to try and play up between us, Sheila. We're not quite green about the ways of youth, you know. She's awful. She only takes it out on me because she doesn't like living here. What makes you say that? Well, I think you'd better go and say you're sorry to Auntie and see if you can help her with the tea. Yeah, she can do her own dirty work. I'm not her maid. I didn't say you were. But in that case, you can stay here till you're feeling a bit more sociable. How'd you get on? I think we'll leave Sheila on her own for a while. I should be careful what you say to her, Anne. Why? Well, you're not always very tactful. You might say more than you mean sometimes. Oh. What are we going to do if she decides to stay on with us? That's up to you. Well, she's off again. You better stop her this time. What do you mean? She's running away. Go! It's, it's all right, Sheila. Calm down. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. Now, what's all this about? I'm not telling you! Now, listen. All right. Anne! Go! Anne, can't you come? <sighs> Sheila, you've got more faces than I've got fingers. And real tears, too. You shut up. Yeah, come on, now that'll do. You've had enough trouble for one day. Dry your eyes. Life's too short to spend it screaming and shouting at one another. That's better. You don't put things right by running away from them, you know, Sheila. Besides, you can't go today. We're having angel cake for tea. What's that? And if you won't stop, you won't find out, will you? No. Then you can have chips again tomorrow. Come on, now. I don't know. It's a good job you've got a stomach. We wouldn't have anything to talk about, would we? No. Besides, it's Sunday tomorrow. You're going back in the evening, aren't you? That is, if you don't change your mind. You please yourself. 
Seems a bit silly to go now, just when we're getting to know one another. I don't care. Good. Well, that's the first fence crossed. Against all odds. But just because Sheila says she'll stay a bit longer now, it only means another trial period. One weekend doesn't prove anything. No, no, of course not. We wouldn't expect that. Don't look for miracles. Sheila isn't used to the tensions and troubles of family living. Life in a children's home is much more impersonal. But I think you may have got the worst over. Stop it, Sheila, can't you? Stop what? Kicking, aren't you? Yeah. Bring it on the floor now, Stephen, love. I thought you were going to make a scrapbook, Sheila. I haven't got any scissors. Oh, where are they? Here you are. I've got some magazines you can have. Now, let's see. I can do it. Get on with it, then. Where's Uncle gone? He's got a class. You sleeping on your own tonight, Sheila? Yes. I think I'd better have those scissors, Sheila. What for? Come on, now. Give them to me. I can't leave you two minutes, can I? How do you know what I was doing? I have to have eyes in the back of my head sometimes. That cloth belonged to my mother. Stephen, let's see what's on the wireless. Why haven't you got a television? Because we wanted a house more than we wanted television. Oh, the other girls have got a television. Mm, well, perhaps we've got things they haven't. What's the matter, anyway? She hits me. Well, keep out of her way, Stephen. You ask for it. William doesn't get into half the trouble you do. I don't like Sheila very much. Well, I expect she'll grow on you. Would you like to come to the bath with William? Yes. Come on, then. We'll have some fun. anybody older for you. Maybe you could ask somebody from the home for tea sometime. Would you like to? No. Is there a friend at school you'd like to ask? I haven't got any friends. Oh, well, never mind. 
Neither have I. We'll have to make the best of each other, won't we? Why don't you ever laugh, Sheila? What's there to laugh at? Well, I don't know. Me, if you like, I don't mind. I wish you'd laugh at something. You put years on me going around like that. I mean, other children seem to say funny things, but you've never made me laugh yet. Don't you ever look forward to anything? Like getting married or going to the pictures? Don't you ever get excited? No. for 10 minutes. Would you like an ice cream? I don't care. What do you have? Vanilla or strawberry? I don't know. Pink or white? Pink. One strawberry ice, please. Sheila. What? Turn around and sit up properly. Why? See that lady over there? She used to be my foster mother once. Did she? Mm. I imagine you've left quite a few scattered about. She wears elastic stockings. Come on, eat up if you want to catch the beginning of the film. Stephen, you are in misery. Oh, there's Sheila there. Hello. Did you enjoy it? It's all right. What are you doing? Playing Beatles. Do you want to play? No, Uncle's going to show me some photographs. Oh, is he? Well, I think you'd better let him take his coat off first. Put it away now, Stephen, then I can set the table. Hello. We don't seem to be getting very far, do we? What shall we try next? Wasn't she all right? She's so damned embarrassing to be seen with. She doesn't seem to have respect for people, property, conventions, anything. It's a constant battle to make her do as she's told. Well, I should have thought you could have managed that. You teach young people. Not Sheila's sort, I don't. How can you make a girl of that age do as she's told when there's no background of affection or trust? What do we do, stop her pocket money? She'll steal it if we do. Has she been stealing lately? I haven't noticed anything. Have the other two? Something to be thankful for. We have all the responsibility of parents and now the authority. And all for 35 shillings a week. Nobody can say we're doing it for the money. Uncle, are you coming? Will you mind, then? No. You can't come in. We're playing tents. We'll go in the front room, Sheila. Sheila, I'll put these away. 
Didn't you hear William and Stephen? Yes, I thought you were with them. Can you make up on a skirt, Dan? Yes. You could take something in, Sheila. You said sit down. You want to make up your mind? Sheila? Stormont House. We had fresh cake every day for a start. Perhaps they had more health than I have. They could just cook better. You rude damn. Go into the other room, Sheila. What on earth do you think you're doing? She's not going to be rude, John. You don't give her a chance, do you? You jump on her for the least little thing. She was perfectly all right till she came out here. What was she rude about? She said she had fresh cake every day at the children's home. Well, maybe she did. I believe they try to live very well in institutions nowadays. It helps to compensate for some of the things they miss. They spent less time making cakes and more time teaching her to enjoy herself. She might be easier to live with. You don't do either, do you? It's too much trouble to play with Sheila. I and mean, if it were Stephen that came rushing out here asking for cake, you'd be making one quick enough, wouldn't you? Stephen doesn't like cake. Let's not break the issue about that. Oh, you, always... you always change the subject when there's something to talk about, don't you? What are you doing now? I'm making a cake. Oh, for God's sake, don't be so damn childish. There's no need to get worked up about this. I'm simply saying that there's no good you're looking after Sheila if you're going to let her upset you. I'm not getting worked up. Go have your tea. Anne. Oh, no, leave me alone. It's such a silly thing to quarrel about. I don't want to quarrel. Do you think you're doing somebody a good turn and all you get is black looks and snarls from everybody? If you helped a bit instead of criticizing, things might be a bit different. I thought I was helping taking Sheila out of the way this afternoon. I can never do anything right, can I? You think too much of that girl, John. You're not fair. You want to think about your own children. Isn't it you who's not being fair? Because Sheila didn't turn out to be the blue-eyed little girl you wanted. You take it out on her. I don't have her slopping all over me, if that's what you mean. Can't you finish that damn cake some other time? <laughs> all right. We've got a fine pair, aren't we, to be looking after a juvenile delinquent? <laughs> we can't even get on with each other. If only she was a bit more pleasant, I'd do more for her. No. You've got a button off your coat. I'm all behind on my sewing. I, I can't even find the scissors. Have you looked at them? Yeah, it's all over the house. Doesn't matter. If they don't turn up, I can always use my nail scissors. Could she have them? I expect so. Don't see why. She doesn't do anything. Yeah, we'd better find out. Have you got the scissors, Sheila? No. Would you like to go and see if they're upstairs? I haven't got them. We more or less expected our house to be turned upside down, for things to get broken, ruined. But how far has she liked it to go? I don't quite see what you're getting at. Well, we know very little about Sheila's background. For all we know, she might attack one of us, set fire to the house, anything. I've told you most of it. She was deserted by her mother at three. She's been in various children's homes since. That's very little to know about a child. Sheila isn't a child any longer. In another five or six years, she's going to be married, or otherwise, with children of her own. Think what that will mean, Mr. Howland. She's never lived in a normal home. How can we expect her to look after her children and hold a family together if she's never even been part of a real family? Before we know where we are, her children will be in the care of the state as well. Then the whole vicious circle is going to start again. You expect us to break the circle? I'm hoping so. I think you've rather played upon our personal situation and my wife's good nature to saddle us with a child you wouldn't otherwise know what to do with. Not particularly. You could say that to a certain extent about all our foster parents. If there weren't any warm-hearted people, my job would be pretty hopeless. I presume not all the children are as difficult as Sheila. She's bound to try you out, you know. There's nothing wrong with Sheila, Mr. Howland. She's not mentally deficient or, or even delinquent yet. But she is backward, emotionally and socially. You dodge all the difficult questions. I can't give Sheila a family life, much as I like her. And I do. She's been one of the thorns in my flesh for about six years. But there is something about her that makes you want to keep on trying. Don't you find? Oh, have you? Mm -hmm. 
They're all crumpled. Well, why didn't you put them in a bag? You didn't give me one. Well, Sheila, I didn't know you were cooking today, did I? Here, look. Put them on a plate and we'll have them for tea. Nobody will know. But the eye doesn't see, the heart doesn't grieve over. There. Well, they look all right now, don't they? We'll have to make some at home if you like cooking. Now, can we? Oh, no, well, not now. I knew you were only saying it. I wasn't. We will make some one day. You've never wanted to before. Well, I am tired today, Sheila. You always are. You never want to do anything with me, never. I do. Oh, don't tell another. And you can keep your bleeding. <laughs> Sheila. Sheila. You shut your flaming mouth. I'm not stopping in your eyes. I told you I wasn't. Stop it, you're not so silly. You'll hurt yourself. Get out! I'm running away! You're not stopping me! Get out! What are you doing? Packing for you. You have to send your blouse and socks on to you when they're dry. It's no good you stay if you're going to behave like that, Sheila. I can't manage you. We can't afford to keep on paying for things to be mended day after day. I can't help it. Of course you can. Heavens above, if I can keep my hands off you, you can manage your tempers better than you do, surely. No. Why can't you? I don't know. They all seem to get on top of me. So do mine sometimes. You're always doing this, Sheila. Getting me mad and then turning sensible and making me feel awful. Hello, it's only me. Is Sheila in? Oh, hello. Uh, yes. Come in. Sheila! Would you like a cup of tea? That would be lovely. Right. Oh, I expect you have it in the kitchen. I don't want to give you any trouble. Oh, all right. How's Stephen and William? Oh, they're fine. I saw your husband yesterday. John? Why? Where was he? Oh, in the office. Did he say anything about me? No, that is, he said you were finding Sheila heavy going, but that isn't very surprising. Well, I do my best for her. I don't know what he expects. I'm sure you do. You seem to be doing very well. Mum, I want my spade. All right, love. Take your Wellingtons off first. I am. You know, she gets me that mad sometimes. If I once started on her, I wouldn't know when to stop. I can understand that with Sheila. I don't think I could live with her for very long. Do you think she's coming down, or shall I go up? I'll go and see. I'll come with you, if I may. Yes, do. No, no, don't. Find me a red bit. Well, uh... Come on, I'm doing all the work. Come on. Uncle? Hmm? Haven't you got white shoulders? That's enough, Sheila. Your uncle wants a rest. Play in your own, can't you? No, I wasn't doing anything. No, she wasn't. time you've been crying lately. What's the matter with you? Anne, you don't want to answer her back every time. We're over 20 years older than she is. We ought to be able to control ourselves better than she can. I'm not playing second fiddle to a chit of a girl. She doesn't leave you alone for a minute. She isn't hanging around your neck. She's sitting on your knee. I've had enough of it, John. I can't do with that girl. She worries me too much. Don't be ridiculous. Have you looked at her? Do you think I'm interested in a 14-year-old girl? There's not much trust between us, is there? Certainly not on your side. Oh, no, John. 
It's not only my side. I don't go running to Miss Gardner every time anything goes wrong. Oh, I see. I should have told you. I went to Miss Gardner because I thought I might find out something more about Sheila's background. I hoped it would help us to understand her. Mm, I understand her. We're a nice family, aren't we? Sheila's going to learn a lot from us. I'd better go and see what she's doing. Never relax with her. That's not Sheila's fault, is it? I don't know. We've never been like this before, have we? Snapping each other's heads off all the time. She must have done something to us. What do you want to do? Send her back, can't we? She's not our responsibility. I wouldn't mind if you could see a bit of improvement for what you do, but you can't. It's rather late to be thinking of that. Everybody at the college knows by now I've got a foster child. A nice reputation I'll have, won't I, as a man who can't manage his own home? I don't see what that's got to do with it. They have to take you for what you are. Which doesn't seem to be very much as far as you're concerned. I didn't say that. Love. If we backed her up, she might seem a bit better. You could try. Are you finished? Yes. There now. Let me see. Oh, what a shame your uncle's not home. We'll have to show them in the morning. Hello, where have you been till now? I had some reports to finish. So wonder they don't lock you in that college. I thought you'd have been home hours ago. You were coughing all last night. I'm all right. I'll go and have a wash. These have turned up anyway. I shouldn't say anything, not now. I never do say anything, that's the trouble. I can't open my mouth. There are other things she might have done with a pair of scissors. I don't know what she could have done that's worse than that. I could kill her when she gets like she does. It doesn't matter. You can't expect to undo the mistakes of 14 years and a few weeks. Nobody can. The very fact that you've got Sheila to stay in your house at all means that you're getting somewhere. Only don't give up now. I thought she'd want to look nice. Of course she wants to look nice. It didn't work this time. Well, try something else. Mm. Well, I'm sure I've done everything I can for her. She's never so much as said thank you all the time she's been with us. Do you expect William and Stephen to say thank you? Thank you for giving me love and security, food and comfort? They're my own children. And because Sheila isn't your child, she has to go down on her knees to get what should be every child's by right. Is that it? Me. She won't be to meet you. Auntie Doris has sent you both five shillings. I thought we'd go and spend it. We've got an hour before Sheila comes home. Look what I've got. Oh, you would go and buy that now, wouldn't you? Well, never mind. You can keep it. Well, you better let me tell your father. Do you manage the money all right? Yes. Good. Well, I know. 
Going to bed, Sheila. Why? It's a quarter past nine. Auntie lets me stay up till ten. Yes, well, Auntie thinks you'd better go up now if you want a bath. Do as I told you. Coming, Anne. Yes. What are you doing? I'm only doing the potatoes for the morning. What on earth for? Well, it takes me all my time to clear up after Sheila. I'm coming. Have you done the puzzle yet? No. Well, then. I don't suppose you happen to know where the paper is. Isn't it on top of the wireless? You got it? What's this? Where'd you find that? Here, give it to me. Did you buy this today? We bought it this afternoon. Oh. Isn't there enough war and bloodshed in the world without introducing it to a seven-year-old child? There are lots of good toys you could have bought. I told him to put it away. He would never have seen it tonight. I suppose you also told him not to tell me about it, didn't you? It seemed an awful lot of fuss to make up a bit of plastic. It isn't the gun. Well, I wish you'd tell me what it was, then. Coming home late, looking miserable. All right. You haven't been exactly cooperative since we came down here, have you? You haven't even so much as said you like the house. You tell Sheila you don't like it here. You can't tell me that. I haven't told Sheila anything. You must have said something. You never stop to think before you speak. I let you have Sheila because I thought she'd be some company for you. And a fine mess that's got us into. I went to see Miss Gardner because I thought Sheila had the scissors and you might get hurt. But I was wrong to do that too, wasn't I? I don't know what you think I'm made of. I'm all right for bringing the money home every month and that's about all. Well, maybe one day I won't be here. And then how'll you manage? I'd like to know that. Oh, John. I managed all right before you came along. I dare say I'll manage when you're gone. No. John! Here now, John, don't go out tonight. John! down the road. He'll be back in a minute. You're crying. Well, what if I am? You had your bath? No, I wanted an apple. Go and get one then, Sheila. Shall I get one for you too? No, thank you, love. You've just gone upstairs now. You want to get rid of me? No, no. All the others did. You don't mind if I'm bad, do you? I do. Bad inside. They're not bad inside, Sheila. I thought you'd have gone to bed. Oh, yes. The minute there's a bit of an upset, the man can go off and have a drink. The woman can't. I haven't had a drink. We've been heading with this a long time. Perhaps it'll clear the air a bit now. Oh, dear. Why do we always take it out on the people we love? We don't. It's you. You bottle things up inside you instead of coming straight out with them. You could have asked me months ago if I liked living here, if that's what was worrying you. What would you have said if I'd asked? Well, it's all right. <laughs> I don't care where I live, love, as long as I'm with you. I never have. We haven't been very close lately, have we? I haven't had much chance since Sheila came. Let her go, John. We were better off without her, weren't we? Yes. Let's get
get rid of her. There'll be other people we can help. We'll have forgotten all about her in a fortnight. Should you try a bit longer? You said yourself she isn't stealing anymore. Oh, I don't know. Sheila, well, I want you. I'm not stopping up half the night every night clearing up after you, Sheila. You can clear this up yourself. Uh, yes, sir. Uh. Come on now. I'm not then. Shut up, Sheila. Shut up! You shut up! Shut up. Calm down. I'm no different to what she is. Come downstairs and I'll give you a drink. Come on. It's all right. Mum is all right. Don't sleep. You'll clear up that mess at once. Do you hear, Sheila? And try and leave the bathroom fit for other people to use. about me bottling things up. It's not likely to be like this. Come on. Oh. I shall be drunk. Never mind. John, bring Miss Gardner. I'll go and see her first thing in the morning. I expect she'll want to talk to Sheila. I've done it. Where shall I put these? Where do you think I'd have put them? No, John, she wouldn't know that. Just put them in the laundry basket for now, love, will you please? How are we going to tell her? I don't know. Look out. Are you taking Stephen and Sheila? No, it's too early. Sheila, you set off in about a quarter of an hour. I shan't be sorry when she's gone. We've got the house to ourselves. It was your idea. Bye. Bye. Bye, kids. Bye, Sheila. You won't be late, will you? John? No. Have you finished? Yes. Off you go, then upstairs. See you later, mashed potato. See you later, mashed potato. <laughs> Following me about, Sheila. You won't be able to shout at me after I'm married. Why, are you going to get married? Yes. Who's going to marry you? I don't know. Somebody will. Well, whoever he is, he'll have to be a hero. He won't. He won't! He won't! <laughs> oh, come on now, Sheila, love. You've had enough tears. We want him to be a hero, don't we? Yes. <laughs> well, then. I don't know. There won't be anything left for you to break soon. Don't worry. I'll find something. Trust you to do that. I made you laugh. You always said I never made you laugh. And I have. It just won't work. Could I ask you to keep her until tomorrow? I'll try to call in this evening for a talk if I can. There are 70 other children in my area besides Sheila, you know. And I have a rather difficult case on my hands at the moment. Is that asking too much? No. Will you tell her? It would be kinder. All right. But she must go. <laughs> Please, with life. Your dad coming for you, Sheila. He might be. He isn't her dad. 
he's as good as. Go on, you ain't got a damn. Me mother says so. You shut up. Oh, you tell him to shut up, Miss Marty Pants. You'd better go out and see if your car's here. If it ever gets here. If your dad can drive. <laughs> Think I'm scared of you? You're nothing. Nobody would want you. They would. They wouldn't if they didn't get paid for it. Our parents don't get paid for us. We're wanted. <laughs> <laughs> No. Isn't she home? She was coming by herself. You didn't tell her anything. Well, no, I was waiting to hear what Miss Gardner said. Would she have gone into town? She might. It'd be just like her, wouldn't it, to go off now? Oh, well, love, you better come in for your tea. No, I'll see if I can spot her. I thought you didn't like Sheila. I don't much, but it's my bedtime and she's always here then. Mummy, try and find me. All right, love. Your husband didn't tell us anything about Sheila's friends. Could she have gone to visit one of them? No. Why not? She hasn't any friends. Any enemies, then? Well, no, she, she doesn't get on well enough with people to make friends or enemies. She gets on right with you, though, doesn't she? You're her foster parents. You are fond of Sheila. Well, we wouldn't like anything to happen to her. I mean, she's been better this week than she's ever been. I, I can't understand her going now. Did she take anything when she went this morning? Any extra money or clothes or anything like that? She hasn't taken anything. So you've looked. You were expecting her to run away then? No. Yes. Oh, I don't know. You never know what she's going to do next. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello, John? Yes? No, nothing. I've been to the police, and they rang the hospitals. No, 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 don't worry. I'm at the children's department now. That damn child! No, I won't. Bye. Dad. <laughs> oh, Sheila, what are we going to do with you? I don't know. We've been worried stiff about you tonight. Why don't you come home? You had anything to eat? I had some sandwiches at the police station. I don't expect Uncle did. You've caused enough trouble for tonight, Sheila. You better go to bed. No school tomorrow. Did she say why she went? She didn't say anything. You're late. Shh. See you later, mashed potato. See you later, mashed potato. Sorting your clean clothes. What do you do to your dress? Tore it. How do you do that? Fighting. Fighting? What for? The girls at school say their parents pay for my school fees. You go to school free. You don't have to quarrel about that. What else did they say? They were talking about you. They said you wouldn't look after me if it wasn't for the money. You're a full-time job, Sheila. We couldn't have done it without the money. Why couldn't you have done it? Well, there's all your food and clothes and all the things you break. Their mothers don't get paid for them. They want to mind their own business. You had a little girl once, didn't you? You wouldn't have got paid for her. That's different. They were right then. You wouldn't look after me if it wasn't for the money. Well, you don't bloody well have to because I'm leaving. And this time I really am. Oh, no, Sheila, not like that. Don't go like that. It's silly. You were just getting over your tempers. I wasn't. Just for something I said. I'm always saying the wrong thing. You have to get used to that if you live with me. Come on, love. Put it away. Don't go like that. Besides, where would you go? I'd go and find my mother. No, love. Miss Gardner would have arranged it if there'd been a chance. Do you know where she is, then? My mother? No. She never came to see me. Nobody ever did. Why didn't they? I would have come. Yes. But you didn't. Oh, Auntie. I don't mean anything. Sheila says she doesn't mean anything. I feel like that sometimes. Only things always seem worse when you're young, don't they, Sheila? Well, I don't know what either of you have got to worry about. You've both got your health and a home to come to. What more do you want? Appreciation. Isn't it, Sheila? I want to find my mother. Well, 
Well, love, I expect you will one day. I mean, we never thought we could keep you forever. Did we, Joan? Only I... I think you ought to get on your feet first. She's leaving us. I don't see what difference it makes who's leaving who. I thought that was what you wanted. Oh, I didn't want it to end like this, Joan. Only things wouldn't be any better if she stayed. You can't change overnight. No. Trouble is, she hasn't got anybody else, has she? No, she doesn't want us, love. She wants her own family. If she can't have them, she should be with trained people who understand her. No, it's you she needs. You with your frying chips in the middle of the night. You with your tempers and your damned independence. Those are the things that go to make up living here, not textbooks and files and intelligence tests. She wants somebody to care for her. Who do you think it is that's kept her here all this while? Not me. Yes. If you're out of the room for five minutes, she's worrying about where you are. If you go up to the post, she thinks she's lost you. You've got something. I don't know what it is, but it seems to be what Sheila needs. Do you think you can let her go now? Oh, love. Hello. I've got two mini miners. You can have one if you like. Steve. Yes, Mummy, look. Stephen, come on. I'm coming. William, I can jump the last five steps now. So I can. Watch. Here I come. Mind. The kettle's boiling its head off. Stopping for tea? mean anything. Good heavens. I don't know what we do without you now. You're the only bit of excitement we've had since we've come down here. <laughs> 